Dr. Nancy Onyango leads the audit division at the International Monetary Fund. And the number of women that look like you and share your heritage can be counted, I think, on one hand. So you acknowledge the fact that in your journey, you've become accustomed to competing for positions, your opening of this of, of your keynote, you acknowledge the fact that every woman will have to fight. Can you perhaps as you take us on a journey point out to the women in this audience how do you sustain the fight? Okay, thank you. Thank you, Howard. That is such a powerful question. Let me first say that Maybe I didn't even recognize it as a fight for many, many years, and I'll come back to that. But as I said, I grew up in a home with three boys, and then we were neighbors with my aunt, who had six boys. So my playground was, I was one girl, nine boys, and I played my part. You know, I was no, I was no pushover. I fought, my younger brother has a scar over his eye. Um, <laughs> which sadly, sadly is attributable to me. Um, so I was a tomboy, I was a tomboy. So I didn't, I didn't see myself as different. And I think my father was, my, my parents were very supportive, but my mother, like the woman I described in West Pocot, was concerned that I wouldn't, I wouldn't find a husband, I wouldn't get married, you know, and things like that. But my dad was very, very supportive. So that's the environment I grew up in. And I appreciate that many people don't necessarily have that uh, support, but that was my first exposure. Uh, and I guess that gave me the confidence to deal with men and women in class or wherever it is on the playground or wherever it was, irrespective, of, you know, if, if I wanted to fight for my rights, I did. It didn't, I didn't feel like a girl. I didn't feel like I was less of a person than they were. So I think that helped. You started in the middle. Where are you driving to? Where are you going to? Let's start from there. Where is your journey? Because if you have eye on the prize, then it will help you overcome a number of things. And I really, you know, there are many women who give up. It's, it's seen as giving up. But maybe that was their goal. I have seen many women who've been offered more senior positions and they turn it down. They don't want it. It doesn't necessarily mean they're a failure. That was their goal. So the first thing is to determine where do you want to go. Now, for me, that strategy worked. And I'm not saying it's the right strategy because I think it took up a lot of my time. But for me, I have studied. I mean, if you look at my profile, I have certifications and degrees to the top, and that's what works for me. For me, when I start doing risk, I will be doing presentations on risk management. I read voraciously, I've read everything there is. I still want a certificate, you know. I'll still go and look for a professional certificate and get that. Now, that's important for me, but what's the strategy for you? The good thing with that is that it makes you uh, an expert to the point that people stop seeing the differences. And I tell this, I, I do a lot of talks to people in, 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 in the States, for example, when we are talking about racism, both men and women. I said, get so good at your job, they stop seeing the color. Get so good at what you're doing, they stop seeing the gender. It's somebody then has respect for you as an expert. Okay? Now. So, so and, and I think the, the women I see, um, the awardees, certainly are experts in their certain fields, but do they articulate it? How do you present? How do you present yourself? Yeah? Um, most of you will have read Lean In, Sheryl Sandberg's. Lean In means step up, answer that question, put your hand up, sit in the front. Look, we had to call people to come and sit in. <laughs> Men don't do that. If this was a, a, a forum, uh, full of men, the front seats would have been taken, and the women would be sitting at the back in most cases. Most cases. It's, I'm not saying in every single case, but that's quite common. And it's because of socialization. We are used to being called up for something and being asked, Catherine, I think you're an expert in this area. Would you like to come and do this? But I'm not sure we are very good at stepping up 
or even trying something that you don't know. I will put my hand up for this project nobody knows anything about. Everybody's talking about AI now. How many of you have put your hands up to say, okay, I'm going to try and understand what this means for, for our organization. So stepping up. So really, what is your goal and what are the steps that will get you there? I hope that answers the question. Uh, Dr. Onyango, as, as you've climbed and navigated your career, how have you built the necessary relationships that have taken you where you gotta go? Absolutely, first of all, first of all, my first comment is make no apologies. If you're feeling hot, take out your fan. And <laughs> fan. So that's the first thing, that's the first thing. If you're confident enough, it doesn't matter. It really doesn't matter. Now, networking is difficult. Network is difficult, in, 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 certainly in my profession, and I think it's the same in banking. As you get more senior, they're mostly men. Uh, the forums for networking are kind of skewed towards men's interests or locations. They're usually evening events, perhaps in a bar, or even if it's an evening event that is structured, it ends up at the drink up, and this is where a lot of the discussions, the sponsorships, the mentorships take place. Most women, what do we do? We show up for the first hour, we do the formal bit, and then you leave, because you have other responsibilities. So we went through that, we, I did that for many years uh, as I was uh, going up the career ladder. But then you have to be very deliberate. Some people take up golf, I've heard people saying that has helped them. But in my profession, first of all, I was in business. I mean, I was a partner at PwC. You're selling most of the time. So you're meeting CEOs, board members, board chairs, you know, government officials. And what happens inevitably, they say, look, let's finish this conversation in the evening or at dinner or at, you know, in, in, in a place that is not necessarily appropriate for what it is that you want to discuss. You're trying to finish it in the office. And I then co-opted a coworker, a fellow partner, and I said to him, I'm going to meet CEO XYZ. I'm a little uncomfortable because uh, he wants to meet in the evening. But I, you know, he says we are going to close the deal in the evening. And so this guy became my good go to guy. He doesn't know anything technically in what I'm talking about. And he'll come in and we have such a good time. You don't say, you don't tell the, the person you're meeting, say, this is my boss, or this is, you know, I've, I thought because we were going to close the deal, I thought it would be good to bring the boss. And I closed so many deals that way. It was fantastic. Now, that worked for a little bit, but it doesn't necessarily work all the time. You will find yourself in forums. Stick, like you say, we tend to stick to the people we know or the strategies that we know, but you really have to step out. So one of the things that I do is in a forum like this, I, or in a table, a dinner table, I will work the table. I will move. I will sit somewhere else at twice. Just try and do it twice. If you do that twice, you've met four people that you did not start out sitting with. Yeah? So including the first two you started with, that's six. That's not a bad number. Secondly, those business cards you collect, those LinkedIn connections you make, don't make connections so that you have a high number. Work on connections that are of value and follow up. Call the person, send an email, be deliberate about it. We met last week at this forum, I'm wondering if we can do this. And you'll then get, uh, you'll be able to sense whether that was just a cursory meeting and there isn't anything there, or there is substance to it and you want to follow it up. Um, over the years, I've relied on friends' friends. I'll call somebody and say, Carol, I, I know you know, you know, I need to meet somebody at Copbank. Please, can you introduce, or tell me about this person's personal interests or tastes and what do you think would work? So you have to invest in trying to understand what you're doing and then build your networks. In terms of mentors and sponsors, I still have mentors and sponsors to this day. Okay, much as I, I do mentor a lot. When I was applying for the IMF job, I had four people who were helping me with, with just, uh, they, they ended up being my referees, but they are people who had walked the journey with me, and I was thinking through, do I really want to do this at this stage in my career? And I, I did, I did um, you know, work with them. They were four men, 
Okay, they were four men. The reason I chose men is because I wanted people who had done financial services sector for a long time and understood the international um, side of it as well. I couldn't find women. They were not there at the time. I'm not saying they're not there now. But I did find these four men, and they're, they're, and they're friends of mine. They're people I have been working with. So I call them my board of mentors or board of sponsors because I, they're my go-to people for, for various things. Even now, I'm in discussions with them about my next move. Um, so it's not, it's, it doesn't end, but find people that you're comfortable with, but you have to be deliberate and stop stop doing the same thing is, is it um that's the definition of madness yeah. doing the same thing and expecting a different outcome yeah. thank you for that unfortunately we've run out of time so i do have to close out our fireside chat um but dr onyango your closing remarks as you think about the significance of the angaza forum the pricelessness of the achievements of our Angaza awardees. If you had one word of advice to your younger self, what would it be? Um, maybe I should have become more feminine a little earlier. Um, <laughs> Do I, tell. <laughs> I was a tomboy for a long time, but uh, but I did I did no. But if it's if it's one word of advice, and maybe just picking up on the comment by the the person online, is putting yourself out there. Um, those of you who are connected to me on LinkedIn will see, you will know that I, I participated recently in interviews for the Central Bank of Kenya governor job. I wasn't successful. I wasn't successful, but I put a post out there to say, you can't be running a race in the sidelines. You've got to put yourself in the race. I didn't have all the information I needed, but I said, let me put in an application as I try and get the answers. And what surprised me is the overwhelming support that I got globally. It was just amazing. It was phenomenal. People are really, and so many people said, because you've done that, I'm going to do this. Because you've stepped up, I'm going to do this. And I suspect that's what she was referring to. So I would say, please don't wait until you've ticked all the boxes. Don't wait until you have, do as much fact finding as you do. And this is something that I can tell you the guys do without blinking. And I love it. I really love, I really love the way, um, I really admire the way men are confident. And in fact, I think it's, it's to them it's natural. It's, they're not thinking about it too much. So I'm admiring it, but for them it's natural. I, I want to get, I encourage you to get to a place where this comes naturally to you, overcoming. I'll stop there. Ladies and gentlemen, Dr. Nancy Onyango. Thank you very, very much for honoring this invitation and for sharing such priceless wisdom with us.